Yo, 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 Clever Live. Welcome everyone to another episode of our live stream show where we take you deeper into the world of Bitcoin, crypto, blockchain, and the Clever ecosystem, of course. Today, we have an amazing guest, a very close collaborator and partner of Clever, uh, a game developer. His name is Sergio Nunes. He's a generalist game developer and hardcore gamer. Sergio has been programming for over 10 years using various technologies in video game, mobile app, and virtual reality projects. In 2016, Sergio relocated to Vancouver to be part of the great local gaming industry Vancouver has to offer. He joined uh, one of the biggest game studios in the world, Electronic Arts. Most of you might know it as EA Games. Performing as gameplay engineer and working in titles like FIFA and other prominent games. In June 2021, after falling in love with blockchain technology and the crypto economy like uh, most of us uh, in this space have done over the last few years, he co-founded Moon Lab Studios, a game studio specialized in blockchain gaming. Uh, and the first title of Moon Labs is, of course, Devikins DVK. Sergio, what a pleasure. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Misha. Hey, everyone. Nice hey, to, be, everyone. to be here. Fantastic. Amazing. Uh, you're calling in from Vancouver. It's like 6.37 in the morning yeah. there. I'm in Israel and it's around 5 p.m. here. So we are 10 hours apart. And yet we have a global audience literally from all the four corners of the world. And it's just unbelievable. Uh, the fire and, uh, and brimstone that are coming through in the, in the Clever community and the Devikins community. I'm very impressed by, by the by the fury inside of uh, the Devikins uh, community. It's a really uh, awesome thing to see because it's different uh, from, from a lot of the crypto communities because it's so uh, focused on essentially that, that gaming aspect. But let's jump right into it. For those who don't yeah. know, and for those who do know, what is Devikins? Okay, yeah. Devikins is a mobile game being developed right now. And it's a play game with the play to earn model. So, fooled by NFT characters. So the most common model, current uh, blockchain model that your your characters are NFT characters. So you own them, you can trade, sell, and buy them. And the Devikins, it's uh, RPG slash uh, training known as Tamagotchi gameplay mixed that. Uh, so your NFT character, it has three life stages and each life stage, you have a specific gameplay. So we have the Ember state that you're just on the NFT and you can use to sell and, and speculate on that. Then we have the Dev Kid stage where you play the Tamagotchi gameplay. And then we have the auto phase that when the RPG comes in, we have battle, lab experience, all the full experience of JRPG in a mobile game. All food by DVK, which is the utility token of the game, and is still a crypt- and it, it is a cryptocurrency at the same time. So you earn and spend DVK inside the game, uh, and prize and rewards, it's all paid in DVK. Well, uh, it, it is a, a fascinating project, and Clever is uh, very happy to be, be a part of it. And you can go a little bit deeper on the, on the partnership and collaboration uh, between Devikins and Clever would be, would be great. Yeah, yes. Uh, so yeah, Moon Labs is uh, the first project being under the Clever Labs. It's one uh, business unit of Clever ecosystem. That way they support and they experiment with different projects aside of their current uh, uh, blockchain and the exchange. So Clever, where, when we start talking about, uh, so my first contact with Clever was with David, whose brother, uh, Dio's brother, the Clever CEO. <laughs> and I, I was getting into blockchain and being fascinated and asked questions to to David how I can I do that? How should I do that? How these things works? And then uh, he know, uh, he, knowing my background of the game develop, and I was kind of uh, 
doing my research and finding that fascinated that we had this search space, uh, an, an explored space, that's a blockchain game. And we were talking about, about February, January of this year. So like after the Axie and the, all the blockchain games boom around May, June, that was kind of not in the media. We'd have like the NFT art blooming around mm-hmm. February. So that was kind of early. And we were talking, I was, my first idea was kind of just getting this knowledge in a, like in a casual chat with David and said, okay, we, we have this proposal of kind of uh, getting together and in partnership, releasing, uh, uh, starting uh, this project, the game development, because they said, oh, we have some ideas for games as well, but we lack the experience. And in our case, we had the game experience, but lack the blockchain experience. So we kind of has this partnership where Clever is doing all this party using their expertise of five years of game of blockchain development to support us bring DevKings to be a blockchain game. And it's yeah, been very it, fruitful. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, you, you have some uh, amazing people from Clever uh, assisting you on, on the blockchain side, which is our, our uh, director of uh, blockchain research and development, Fernando Sobrera, the blockchain guru himself. Philippe Rieger, head of Clever NFT and Clever Exchange. So you you got some uh, some solid folks, uh, uh, you know, assisting you through the through the journey uh, on the NFT side and the blockchain side. And I do want to dig a little bit deeper on the NFT side because uh, the the idea of, of digital ownership uh, and the evolution and even revolution uh, that NFTs uh, instill uh, into the gaming uh, industry is something that. I don't think that a lot of people truly have caught up to. Um, how do you see the, the potential of NFTs absolutely transforming uh, the gaming industry? I, I think, yeah, the NFT part itself. So the NFT is an asset. And video game, it's all about owning assets. So when you play any video game, you grab, you collect items, you collect characters. And they, that's asset ownership. But with the blockchain, we have the ability to explore that, to go outside of the game. So we can bring that to real world and have like real market around that game. So you lose the boundary of only digital with the real world. Though the game industry, they could, ha- they had some techno- techno- technology to do that before, but was not so encouraged to do so. Like, I think a good example Why? was the... Why, I've I don't been know. Maybe about this. Why? why? Because the, the technology for for you know the uh, transferring game assets, uh, even on blockchain technology, has existed for a few years. But yes. how come only now it's truly bubbling and boiling to 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 the, that point where and, it's almost you know boiling over? And then my guess, I'm just as speculating. Uh, the big ones didn't see any value on that because like. Uh, Actually, before, like we had some players that would uh, improve one account to try to sell that for a profit, and that was not uh, not encouraged by the game developers. So we could get like a ban and stuff like that. So I think they, even though they they had the technology, they didn't see that as a valuable thing to do. But right mm-hmm. now we have these small uh, indie companies of blockchain game gain so much so much space. They are saying, okay, I see it. We have a business there. I think we have to adapt because that's the where Mark's going on. Uh, I think one example of that, we have like Diablo 3 that was released in 2012. They had an auction house and that was kind of similar. Not a, It didn't use a blockchain, but it had this uh, mark, open market with players selling equipment. And they tried to open for real money and had a lot of issues. Pretty soon they take down that. They took down that. Hmm. And right now... I, I don't know the intricacies of that issue, but I, I know that was, I, I would say that was one of the first open uh, AAA game that we, ha- we could have like a market between players. That it was legal to sell assets. And right now we are seeing that moving to the blockchain and they are getting so much space and we are seeing like big names moving there. Uh, I believe four months ago, Ubisoft announced a partnership with Tezos uh, I, I know other game studio, big game studio was kind of studying blockchain. So I think that that's the future. As I said, uh, video game, big part of video game is only assets. 
So, and blockchain gives, and NFT gives, like, a, a, a awesome tool to support that. Because yeah. you could have, like, a centralized database, but blockchain technology offer, gives you that for, for free, and per se. And it's all there, battle tested, and... It, and that's the beauty, the, the battle testing, right? Like a one project kind of feeds the next one. Each year produces more innovation that the, uh, the, the projects that come after can feed off of. And that, I think that's something that we are clever uh, and, and definitely your cat uh, is, is using in her own evolution. Gold. But uh, amazing. What's her name or his? Gold. Uh, his name is Gold. You broke up there a little bit. I, I didn't hear anything for the last five seconds. Oh, sorry. Yeah. His name is Goat. Like yeah, the other animal. Yeah. Goat. <laughs> Clever yeah. goat. Good. Yeah. Cat goat. Amazing. Uh, it, we were touching upon a little bit uh, also before we were speaking. And um, the uh, as we're talking about the evolution of gaming, uh, and you come from the, the legacy uh, gaming world, and we'll get to that soon. But... Uh, I want to hear your your thoughts and your ideas uh, and your input on on how we've gone from pay to play, free to play, and now of course the the, the major thing, as you said in your intro as well, is play to earn, right? And mm -hmm. and how that's changing uh, the entire gaming landscape. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, it's a broad question. So yeah, uh, I think this. Um, uh, I, I think. It changed along with the technology because when you say pay to play, uh, we that was the beginning of the game industry and it was along PC and console. Then the mobile game gets more uh, gets more popular. I believe it, today more than fifty percent of the players play on mobile game because of routine because you can play anywhere. So majority of the gamers. Uh, it's playing on mobile game and the mobile game uh, business model uh, since you, you're so used to download apps for free and then you can buy stuff inside you imagine you paying to use Facebook okay you pay you have to pay 199 or uh, to download Facebook no one would download that so you see this... I wouldn't download it uh, <laughs> even when it's free but uh, yeah <laughs> yeah me neither I, that I like uh, privacy and I don't like privacy infringement yeah <laughs> okay, any uh, service, uh, usually you get for free the app, and then we may or buy with your money or buy with information in case, <laughs> like Facebook. That's the exactly. Case. <laughs> uh, so, um, with this uh, shifting of me of playing media, and since the mobile works more like in a free uh, model, then the game moved to this free to play uh, model where you could buy things inside the game and that's why and that's uh one thing that we can link together is that usually a console a pc game they are released and that's a, a like a black box you buy that you play that and that's it and then they move to the version 2 version 3 if it's a successful title whereas in the mobile game you have one long-lived app like we are talking about one game like clash of uh, clash of clans that's 11 years old, I believe, 12 years old. And they are not releasing uh, Clash of Clans 2, but they kind of improved that game because they offer that game as a service. That's even a, a techno term. So it's a game as a service. So the service continue going on, and the player play that for free, and they can spend money, and that's the, how they get the revenue to speed up their progress. Some games go too much, and they turn into pay-to-win. Because any player that wants to play the game for free has no chance of being competitive. And that's, that's the, the fine tuning there where you can make all players feel accommodated and include in the game without feeling uh, excluded because they are not uh, willing to pay to be competitive. And that's where's the balancing and the magic. Uh, it's the really challenge there. And then we are moving now to play to earn because, as I said, the, the game itself, you're owning assets you're, and the assets improve over time and you all always have these competitive players that want, are willing to pay to get the best of, of experience before you would have to pay for the game company. We had a, we, we, they would release new characters, new strong cards, so you have to pay to that. Now, players are, are getting that. 
they are getting the power of improving their account and selling that with the blockchain technology. And that's where enter the to play to, to earn model. And I think that's the future because we have this evolution, like the blockchain is, uh, as I said, we moved from pay to pay to play to free to play when we, the game shifts to the, the mobile game. And since now the blockchain technology is getting popular, we are moving the game as well from uh, free to play to play to earn. That's a natural movement. And on that point, uh, your own career uh, within game development, uh, you, you have a lot of uh, uh, great positions in the past, and that was in legacy gaming. Uh, what made you be so convinced that you uh, were going to take the step from legacy gaming to blockchain gaming? One because I, I'm an enthusiast of blockchain again, uh, of blockchain in general. Uh, that's a great technology. I think that's the future. Uh, and aside of my experience at, at EA, that I think I didn't get much knowledge to act to to put that in the game. My previous job before was in a mobile uh, in a company called Iugo. Where do we, uh, we had a game called The Walking Dead Road Survival. And their business model, I think, was matched so good with blockchain game in a play to earn model that I said, okay, I have this knowledge of the game that can easily be translated to that. And I, I said, I have this inside, I think that can be translated to that. And I had the opportunity of developing that. So I said, yeah, I have to do that. Like, I left EA, you know. So, so <laughs> there are some people that I talked to and they said, how you're so crazy to leave EA to, to, to work in a new project and a new company and even more in a new industry. So it's uncharted waters. We are learn as we go because there is no right answer or like battle test uh, technology or approach. To that. We have many games trying things new uh, at the moment. So. Some are going to be successful, others not. And one thing that I think not just us, but all these blockchain games is not afraid to change. If they think they are seeing that that model is not working, I think they should go. And, and people, uh, people, the community should be open mind to that because that's a new industry. No one ha- knows how to do that. It's not like FIFA that they know their model. They know that's going to work. They're not going to change and they're going to keep releasing one game after other following the same the same shape that that's a the blockchain industry is a new thing we're all learning here but it, it let's say let's see five years from now how that's going to be that's probably that's going to be the the new standard of the mobile and the gaming industry of the of the world i i i completely agree with you i think it's one of one of the most fascinating aspects uh, and attributes of the blockchain industry and the crypto industry is that it doesn't matter whether you've been in it for five years and work with it day and night uh i personally learn every day new things whether you go down the bitcoin rabbit hole or any other bit you know blockchain rabbit hole it doesn't matter there is so much knowledge and so many innovative ambitious projects people uh developers uh and it's it, that for me is what keeps uh like the, the uncharted territory yeah the fact that we're walking into the wild west and no one has been here before I and mean, that is that is the beauty of it all so uh I, I, one thing that we at clever uh facilitate uh, is clearly financial simple powerful tools um for the third world uh, we have a, a, a lot of users uh, in Western Africa, primarily Nigeria. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is a strong market for us. South America, Southeast Asia, uh, Philippines uh, has, has grown to become one of the largest markets uh, for, for the Clever ecosystem. And I know uh, that is also for Devikins, a very strong uh, presence in, in Philippines and other uh, developing countries. How do you see not just uh, Devikins, but the entire play uh, to earn model uh, in relation to the third world and, and earning opportunities. Yeah, that's a good question, uh, and that's I, uh, and that was we proposed the Devkins NFT be like the way it is, 
not following the the fashion right now in the in the blockchain game where you have a limit supply of nfts and then that's controlled by community because that create the inflation right today to start playing axe for example it's in a third world it's it's a prohibitive price they okay they overcome that with the scholarship program but we, we thought okay they, they have that I, we can make uh uh, a different approach, making the NFTs uh, more affordable. And okay, we understand that we have to have inflation, so we reward the early adopters. But I think it shouldn't be that prohibitive that anyone that's jumping uh, in the, into the game six years, uh, six months later, a year later, cannot it has to pay one thousand dollars to start playing the game and check the game, and they see okay, I I, I even didn't like this game, you know. So that's our ideas to make that are more affordable, so everyone has access to that. Uh, but we we still, aside of that, we're under uh, we are studying other means to be more uh, in, uh, to increase our inclusion to all players. Like even the this lending program that that is known as scholarship, things to make that more in, inclusive and everyone can play and earn because. Speaking of third world, since the, uh, usually we value things in dollars and dollars are so strong there, they, ha- they have a huge impact in the community. If they can't play, okay, uh, if dev kids, you can do like $10 a month for like a, some from US, from Canada, you can say, okay, that, that that's just a regular game for me. But from some, someone from Nigeria, they if they can get like $10 a day, that that is a huge compliment for their income, you know. If they can get get even more, that 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 might become their main income. <laughs> and I think the market it's strong there, and the Philippines as well. There's the the hottest hottest point right now for the play to earn game. I believe six percent of our community or is from Philippines right now. So How the last much? time we did a start six percent. More than half. Six zero. Yes. Philippines represent. Philippines in the house. Yes. Let's see. How many people are from Philippines right now in the comments? You know, just comment away. And guys, please do drop questions in. We have a backstage team, an amazing backstage team that are uh, collecting all of your questions. So if you have any questions for Sergio, um, drop them in during the live stream and we'll take them uh, in, in the last part of it. Regarding uh, the NFT aspect, how do you see Devikins different from the rest of the NFT games out there? Okay, uh, you mean just the NFT or the prog itself? The, the N- oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm, I'm a full full scale kind of guy. I, I, I'm a macro kind of person, so I zoom out. Please do zoom out. Zoom yeah. in, and, but always don't, don't forget to zoom out. It's always more important. Yeah, it's a trick question because I have like so uh, major and Big ideas for DevKings. I don't think we could. Let's just say that I think we, we wouldn't stop in one one game for the NFT. Imagine you have your NFT and you have a mirror, uh, not a mirror, but a couple of games that you can use that same NFT because that's a real world asset. Imagine you can import and have like a different different uh, games, what they usually call metaverse, and you own that asset and you can play. Okay, I like this RPG game. I don't like RPG game. I like adventure game, but I have my character. My character can be a character in any game, something like that. But that is so much down the road. Right now, the Dev King, and, and I'm getting experience, and that's for myself. That's a personal uh, opinion. When I started playing uh, back in February, some play touring games, uh, you... You could count on your hand how many had like a polished finish, like a real triple A game feeling. Many looks like okay, they get the blockchain right, but they lack some of the quality of the games or not that fun. So I said, okay, I think I can get a product to fill this this missing, this lacking in this industry. That it's like a real game, like a fun to play game that it's linked to the blockchain. So. My idea, and I'll always be adamant to that, is that DevKing is a game first. So you're looking to the fun part. So you're engaging the players so they 
they they don't feel that playing to earn it's like a chore it's like a job like other blockchain games feel you're just doing ma- mindless work just to get your coins to sell later the dev kids it's engaged uh uh game that we have like a strong community so you have ideas for guilds uh social events and then on top of that we have the the cryptocurrency the dvk is a chair on top imagine you're playing a fun game and when you end uh, end of the day okay i made five bucks like imagine you're mixing the earned potential with what a regular players play today in the mobile game okay today you have like a real fun game like clash royale you play three hours a day. Okay, I had a good experience, but I didn't earn anything. I just, maybe I, I spent some money to get some better in the game, but I don't get any actual monetary return on that. And the DevKin, we are trying, we are aiming to that. Okay, you ha- you're going to have like a fun, good experience playing games. And then at the end, you still have like a, you still earn some money on that. That's, I think, it's the differential of that game. You have, like, different goals. Amazing. Truly uh, fantastic to see your passion uh, coming through. And amazing with the comments. Your, your community is on fire, definitely, for sure. You know, hearing half, more than half of your, your user base in the Philippines also uh, gives a fantastic, uh, you know, grassroots movement in Philippines that can also, of course, spread throughout uh, Southeast Asia. So, uh, fantastic future for for your game uh when you designed the void what did you have okay. in mind? uh uh yes first of all the void... first of all stop stop for a second what is the void and what did you think of when uh when designing it cool yeah the void is the world of dev kids so that's the major thing it doesn't mean that we have like a promotional art called the void, the, the missing guard, and that's one part of the void. So the void it's made of regions. The game of that is may be placed in one or many regions, but the void is the world, and it's a separate dimension from us. So it's not like a future Earth or solar system. It's a total different. And when I was developing the void. Uh, since I was, I was, I wanted to be free to explore things in the theme and lore, and that's why you moved away from the post-apocalyptic Earth or something like that. Because if you try to change something from reality, you have to explain. You're saying, okay, if you say this is Earth, uh, four years, uh, four thousand years uh, from today, and then you change, like let's say gravity, people are gonna ask, why you change gravity in the future? And then we have to kind of explain because people are passionate about that so that uh the void it's a separate dimension uh, the rules that that there is no rules and one thing that i think it's really fun it's like playing with absurdity because i'm fasc- fascinated with that that's why you have this mix of hp lovecraft we have you have that absurdity of the cosmical th- beings and we have this uh, mix with this guy with uh it's a uh, start uh it's a game it's a uh, uh, a turn-based third game that has this absurd in the comedy and the writing, and we kind of missed t- together. So Devkins, uh, it's uh, and the void is where you take place, and it's a place with no rules. It's a dimension, and uh, anything we can count, uh, we can find there. And I, I think world, you can tell by, by the NFT rules. loops. Yeah, <laughs> and I think people can tell that because the Devkins have like a unique uh, loop. Even though they kind of remind some like human-like beings, they are not human. They they are genderless. They are they are yeah absurd and things. And when we develop their like behavior and we're doing some items right now for the game, we're kind we try to do this absurdity. Like you have one activity that to improve agility that they step on like Lego blocks and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I personally, I, I might have uh, you know a bit of a bias, but when I when I meant these uh, the the clever ones, you know, come out with like a clever here, clever there, that 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 makes me tick, and I'm sure a lot of people in the uh, in the viewership around the world as well, uh, I, I, for sure among uh, the clever community, it's, uh, it's very appreciated once you once you get that. Uh, when uh, we talk about uh, clever NFT, 
right? And the cooperation uh, between uh, you guys at Moon Labs and Devikins uh, with the Clever team, uh, especially uh, especially when it comes to CleverNFT.com, uh, which is the, the main site to uh, to to buy and and mint the, the Devikins NFTs. Yeah. You're working with Philippe Rieger and his team. How has that uh, process been? How has it been working uh, with Clever and how uh, is the, the progress going on future upgrades on CleverNFT.com? Okay, yeah. The pro progress is going great. We are improving every day. Every day you have like pitches and chains and community say, okay, we could improve that and then we put it on the backlog. Uh, but it's a partnership. So we have, it's really good because they have a lot of ex experience. But at the same time, it becomes a bit, bit challenging be, uh, in, in question of schedule because we are two teams. So and everyone is working remotely and in different time zones. But the things, uh, the any the thing we are building, uh, uh, it's so as I said, we are learning as we go. So we have this this learning curve on the demo lab side. And then we have the clever with the, all the experience, and that's gonna be it's, it's being like a real learning moment to us, and it's it's been great, but a bit slower. I understand the community; they love to ask when hard mean when mark place. We are getting there. We are getting there. Bear with us, because we we wanna don't rush to to do things. We try to rush with this. The shop was not a good experience, so now we learn our lesson. So we are gonna over. Uh, a caution with all everything we we release, and but that takes time because we have to test, we have to fix things, and Clever is gonna be uh, is being a crucial support to that because they have so much experience. It's it's really nice. Every time we have one issue, like we we say, okay, how can you do that? How can you do that better? And then we have like a sync with Dio, Sobreta, and Marlon. Marlon is such an experienced guy. Another shout out to him as well. And they kind of have the solution. It works. Like we had the shop. We, we kind of have to revamp the shop because our first idea, our first approach was not feasible. And they said, okay, let's do this because we have that done already. And now it's working perfectly. We still improve the, the, the inventory. I understand we have some issues uh, still. But as I said, now it's uh, like a, a real partnership. So we have... Uh, People from the two uh, two companies talk to each other, and uh, that makes things a bit slower. But it's make it makes more uh, robust because have like it, it's a it's a we are working together, so it's more eyes on it on the project. Especially in, in blockchain and crypto, the the most important thing I think we've learned uh, over the years in Clever is to build a very 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 solid technical foundation that stands on robust security and um, absolute uh, validation and Q and A testing uh, before going live with anything. Uh, and yes, it might take a little bit longer, but uh, patience rewards the bold, as I've heard. So uh, when it comes to patience, I know there's a lot of people uh, in your community, in the Clever community, that is waiting to actually play the game, right? But they're also waiting for a cinematic trailer. So oh, yeah. I, I've heard a little bit about a cinematic trailer being uh, in the making. Uh, do please share any and all details that you can uh, about the cinematic okay. trailer. And when it's about yeah. to drop. Okay. Uh, and ju just to clarify, a cinematic trailer it's a trailer that's not a shot from the game. So we are we are we partner with an animation studio from Spain called Sunshine. They are known to make video game uh, uh, animation. They are really good. They are on the make right now, along with our we have like a sound engineer working together with them. And the schedule to get the video it's uh, last week of November, first week of December. And then after that, we have to do some uh, in-house tweaks, like put the, the the game logo, the company logo, website things, and make uh, make sure everything is correct. So we, we should see that dropping close to the closed beta around there. And I'd say it's short; it's it should be around forty seconds, fifty seconds, but it's gonna be it's it's worth it. It's worth it. It's it's looking really great. I, I like I would love to share, but it's so bare bones right now. 
but uh, yeah. And I, no, uh, no, no, and no, no. Yeah. No need to share now. Share, yeah, share yeah. when ready. Yeah. Always share when ready. Um, amazing. So I, I wanted to get into a little bit more on the details on how you work as a team within Moon Labs, right? Within uh, the Devikins uh, game. Your art, your art is absolutely uh, top tier, uh, first class. Uh, really, something spectacular. Even uh, in the over flooding NFT space right now, that most of, most of the projects really don't have that gaming connection or that blockchain connection like you do. Um, you know, honing your own experience and your team's experience, and honing Clever's experience from from blockchain uh, infrastructure uh, and implementation and for solutions. How do you how do you work as a team? Do you work remote? Do you work global? And, and, and how does it function, especially uh, with regards to the art, your illustrators, and how does that being implemented into the game? Yeah, uh, so Moon Labs today, we are 10 people, count with me. Uh, we are remotely, but ma majority of us are in Canada and Brazil. So we have around five, six people here in Canada, four people, oh, five people here and five people in Brazil. Most of the developers are in Brazil. And aside of me that I work as a, a gameplay developer, designer, and the arts are here as well. And regarding the art, as I said, I saw that we are missing some polishness in the blockchain gaming industry. And I said, I think we should attack that point. And as I said, okay, I want the best artists and the best quality for the game. And looking up, I had worked with Elaine. Elaine is our art director before, and she's so talented. And I approached her. I said, I had this idea. And she said, okay, I love this uh, anime style, creepy style as well. That's the idea of Devkins. And we started talking about that. She was kind of... Uh, uh, at the first, she was uh, uh, really in, uh, uh, like looking for, uh, enthusiastic with the project, but a bit concerned about leaving her job because she was working 80 years there. And I said, no, okay, take this faith, uh, uh, jump of faith. It's something you want to work, you want to change. And at the end, she decided to join in. And it was for the best because her art is killing and the uh, Elijah and Heiji are the other artists, and they 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 do not so apart her. It, it's a it's a great team. It's great artist team. But fun fact: the first, uh, the usual some of the concepts start from me, and they are not good. They are kind of aside of their aside artists, they are magicians because they turn all my crap concept arts into r real good art. I shared some of them in Discord. I can share that again. Yeah, they are they don't look good, but they get the gist. The gist of the the idea of what I want to show and <laughs> and, uh, and and depict with the image, and they turn that in a real art, or like a professional art. Uh, it, it's fun how and, and, and it's really nice when I try to concept something, and I'm I'm not artist at all. I draw something and I try to convey as much as I can detail, and they turn it something incredible. It, it's really nice when I concept something. And I said, okay, that's going to look really badass when they, they draw that. <laughs> Amazing. Fantastic. Um, there, there is a, a stop that happened over the past year and a half. You might have noticed it's called the, the corona pandemic. Um, I read some interesting numbers, uh, what happened during the uh, you know, corona for gaming. Uh, and more than almost half of the population of the world is now considered an official gamer, essentially. They spend enough time per week to actually be a gamer. How have you, uh, you know, being a hardcore gamer and a game developer, have you seen uh, how the corona pandemic and all the restrictions and lockdowns and, and the isolation, how has that affected the game industry and how do you think it's going to affect it moving forward? Yeah, uh, it affects in a positive way, even though I, I, I don't see it as a pandemic as, okay, it's a, it was a plus. But it affects in a good way the gaming industry because since everyone was locked inside house, uh, inside their homes, they had like to find some way to entertain themselves. So not just the, the game itself, but like movies and, and all the entertainment industry 
even though the some of the parts of the uh, the entertainment industry was really uh, hurt for that because they need to people to go to go out like concert and stuff like that but for the game since it's something that you do inside of your home we saw like a, a big jump that and i could tell i was working at ea at the moment we could see the, num uh, the numbers uh going up and and and, and that was like a, a positive way and i think the game industry de uh, delivered that so <laughs> It was be beneficial, but I, I would rather not have not happen that too, because COVID was like a disaster for the world. Even more for Brazil, where I am from, and I follow the news there, and it's not a good scenario. Yeah, but yeah. But for for the gaming industry, I think we kind of helped to cope uh, to cope with that in some way. We we could help with that. Same thing with the with the crypto industry. You know, people moving away from cash, moving away from interaction physically. Of course, clearly. Uh, the, the, the doubt and the distrust against the government and uh, banks and especially central banks and their money printing has, has just completely exacerbated during the, the pandemic. So uh, crypto is flourishing, uh, unfortunately, uh, due to, to, to Corona, but uh, uh, it's good for crypto. That's for sure. And it's good for gaming. Uh, and me meanwhile, guys, amazing uh, to have your entire, uh, you know, the ha half of the Philippines uh, seems to be here. Everybody uh, smash that like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel and and share our videos. And if you want to see uh, a little uh, concise summary of uh, what an NFT is, just check our latest video uh, uploaded overnight, and uh, you will get the gusp of uh, what is actually happening uh, with the digital ownership and the future uh, of digital ownership on the blockchain. So, regarding a uh, future, your vision for Devikins, right? You 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 you're going to release the trailer. You have the game uh, in development, uh, set to be released uh, when ready. What is your game moving forward after the official launch uh, regarding half a year, one year, two, three, four? Uh, what's your vision for Devikins and Moon Labs? Yes. Uh, I have main ideas for Devikins. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, the when the... the Game industry, the game is moved from console, PC, even though we still have like a big numbers there, but majority is uh, starting playing on mobile and the mobile games start to be as a service. So I don't think we're going to release the uh, like DevKings in one year and then we're going to move to 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 another uh, game and, and forget DevKings. So DevKings is going to be like ongoing uh, game as well. We have ideas for three, four years in a, uh, from now on. So if you want to uh, develop the whole DevKings before releasing, we would see the game in 2025, something like that. So the idea is to make DevKings installments. So in our original white paper, we propose in three phases. And we are seeing some another, uh, nice features uh, getting your, your to-do list that probably is going to drop in between phases. But I, 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 I'm really looking forward to reach phase two of that. I think that's where you're going to shine, where you put the RPG and, and, game, and the combat gameplay and all the level up, grinding items. R right now, it's the phase one. It's a good one, but it's just introductory. I, I think the phase two and phase three, it's going to be it, like down the road one, uh, one, two years from now. I think it's where you're going to really here and enjoy playing that games and and if you're watching this today you're early you're early. if you believe in us super I think early i may add <laughs> super early yeah stick around <laughs> and again it's gonna be a fun a ride bit of patience. <laughs> yeah because game development it's, it's a hard thing usually games take two three years to to make you see like some with e3 it's one biggest uh, video game uh, uh, entertainment fair we have once a year where you drop like announcement on new games. Usually they announce like there was a one game that I'm really looking to look forward that's called Elden Rings. The first clip I believe was dropped in 2018. So they had like two years without any news and now they just came up. Okay, we have like a launch date is going to be 20, 20, uh, 2022. So four years of development. So game takes time. Uh, we start develop DevKings in, in June, so we have like five months of development. That's really nothing for game development. 
but yeah, we, we announced two words. So people and people bought the idea because Devkin has a killer art. And, and myself, I'm looking forward to deliver all of everything I have in my mind. But that takes time. And uh, as for Devkin, I, I believe yeah, in five years you're gonna have like a really really shiny time of game there. Well, great things, excellent things take time to build. And people did really need to understand that, you know, Clever wasn't built in a day uh, and neither was Rome and neither will Devikins. So keep on pushing, keep on building. The, the community understands and have patience and support. Uh, and it's great to see. So before we go into questions from the community, uh, what is the plans uh, for Devikins, uh, especially regarding the coordination with uh, our blockchain guru, uh, Fernando Sobrera, about the future migration uh, to Clever Chain? Yeah, we, we start talking that. Uh, actually, we, we see three things uh, uh, really attached to the Clever with Devkins. So we have Clever ID that should be the same login for the login in the game. So, and that's we are building like a ecosystem, like a Tango ecosystem. Imagine, we don't have details yet, yet, but imagine you have your Clever ID and then you can log in in the exchange and the marketplace, since the marketplace is gonna be one branch of the exchange and we're logging in the game. So we have like a seamless experience between your assets there. Imagine, okay, I'm playing the Dev, King, uh, the Dev Kings. Okay, uh, uh, I don't wanna use this NFT anymore. I wanna just sell pass on on the marketplace. Okay, let's with all that send to the uh, marketplace and that's all done seamless because you have one ID there. You have one account to rule them all. And we have the, since Devkins is gonna be, uh, is gonna follow a custody uh, model, we have the Clever Bank solution as well to keep track of the DBK transactions, the withdrawal deposit and, and, and for the NFT as well. And then we have the move to the blockchain to the Clever blockchain. Uh, they they started the, doing the test, re, uh, test re right now. We are still waiting for some definition to actually make a proper transfer plan, how it's going to be the NFT transfer, how that's going to take place, how the DVK is going to be transferred to that as well. But it's all really, uh, really looking good. I'm looking forward to, to have everything that because the solution is amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a... It's a... Clever Chain is a solution that is uh, many, many years in the making. We're not talking about one or two. We're talking about more than uh, than five and closer to a decade, especially regarding the experience uh, of our, our leadership uh, management team who, who truly understand security uh, better than uh, almost uh, any team, uh, especially in the, in, the, in the blockchain world. So uh, you've definitely chosen a great uh, partner and platform uh, to, to migrate to and to build your game upon. So let's get into questions from the community. Guys, you can still uh, hit that uh, comment button if you have any questions for Sergio uh, regarding the uh, or the Clever Migration. So let's start. What are your plans with the burning of DVK token and how would you implement it? Uh, we don't have any official announcement yet, but we are aware that it's a common practice in the blockchain. And we're still seeing uh, how we're gonna do that. If you're gonna do like once a year, like usually Binance does, they get some profit and they said they or they buy back and burn. But we we still playing around that. We and we we the plan is to to burn DVK as well. But people have to understand that DVK is the main play to earn pool right now. If you keep decrease that deflation and that that hurts the play to earn pool that players can earn. So it's a balancing that we have to. To put there because if the, the pool uh, dries how are you gonna send uh, put that dvk back again so it, it's a trick question when you say let's make that deflationary but we still at the same time have to to give that away in the plate one uh, model because 100%. some other games yeah they don't have like max supply so they can't keep generate but that's a dangerous game because you introduce inflation because since no, then you no have infinite supply. inflation. Uh, yeah. It's called the Federal Reserve. Let them yeah. do, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, let them so, do what they do. Yeah, I understand that's important to deflate and to deflation the coin. But if you see that the money itself 
uh, attached to the DVK, let's say US dollar, is an inflationary coin. When you have your max supply of DVK, they are deflationary by the, the symmetry, let's say that, because the, the, infl the US is, is going to keep uh, increasing their inflation, but the DVK is not because they have that amount fixed, and that's one way of deflation. But people like to burn the coin to accelerate the deflationary uh, characteristic of the coin. But if you burn too much, we run out of the DVK to, to give in the game. There's always a balance between deflation and inflation, that's for sure. But I'm sure you'll get right. Uh, it, it takes time. Next question. What type of uh, first P2E are you going to implement in Devikins? PVE, PVP, or RAID? RAID. Uh, we are not separating that. We believe that when you, we introduce combat on phase two, we're going to have one part of PVE, so one star line so players can play alone. And, uh, play al uh, alone and enjoying the the lore of the, the void, learn things along with PvP with their uh, weekly uh, uh, rankings and rewards. So I don't think we are going to separate that because since it's the same core, it's the same combat core, then we are we're gonna release uh, that together. Raid, I think, is gonna be down the road because it means that it's gonna ha gonna have like a a deeper guild interaction. For uh, who is uh, for anyone that is online that doesn't know what raid means, it means that uh, it's like a social combat combat uh, mode. Imagine that we have like a huge boss with a huge HP, and every uh, everyone from the guild has to has a chance to decrease and uh, beat the boss as a guild. So that's more like a social slash combat experience. Great. A little bit more on breeding, a bit the detailed question. Regarding the adult NFT to breed, is it necessary yeah. to burn also an adult Devikin in order to max the desires Devikin that we want to level up? <laughs> yeah, for breeding, we, we renamed for procreation because procreation, it doesn't have like to be a sexual thing. And since Devikin is genderless, we, we, we rebrand that to procreation. procreation. Yeah. I like uh, it. Yeah. Uh, there is no NFT burn related to the procreation. We do have some items requirements for that. And to promote uh, adult dev king so they can increase their max level capabilities, they have to burn NFTs. And right now, when you, uh, as we announced in the white paper, current design, it's uh, 72 NFTs to be burned to max out one uh, adult NFT to the max level the, to the current max level, that's 100. So imagine that each... Uh, so we are calling that promotion. So when a, a dev, uh, dev king get to the auto phase, they have like promotion one, level one. And as long as they are on promotion one, then can get to the max level 10. As soon as they reach the max, uh, the level 10, they have to promote to level two to get to the level 20. And to promote, they have to burn one NFT. And that, that's a progression. So you burn one NFT to promotion two, three, and four, two NFTs to promotion five, six, and seven, and three NFTs for promotion eight, nine, and 10. And when they are promotion 10, they can reach level 100. And that's the, the main burn mechanic right now. And we are studying others with equipment. But as I said, that's our long uh, down the road plan. Great. I hope whoever asked. Uh such a detailed answer. Uh, that was a, it was a, a great detail. So uh, let's get into the next question, which is how will we access the game and when can we expect it to be released? The big question. Yeah. Uh, the release, it's open right now. We, are, we do have a soft date around uh, mid-December to start the close beta. So the close beta, we are gonna invite a, a few players to start uh, start playing the game. We're gonna check uh, the stability and the health of the the game, as it shows that it's it's holding off, it's uh, it's looking good. We're gonna invite invite more players until we reach our KPIs that are like indices that we're gonna stipulate to go to an open beta. Open beta, it's still beta, so it, it means that okay, 
you might, you're going to get a close experience of the final product, but some bugs and issues might happen. And uh, but it's open. Everyone that want to test the game, it's available to it's able to to get in. And as we reach our KPIs for the uh, to the open beta, then we're going to do a full release, and that it's going to be the the actual phase one release, and then we're going to move forward to the phase two. So around December, we're going to see some players starting playing, and we're going to. And one thing that I, I want to point out that the closed beta it's going to have a few players, but as Feel that the the game it's it's looking good. We're gonna invite more players to the close beta. So if someone doesn't get an invite to day one, don't be disappointed. You might be invited down the road in a couple of days, couple of weeks as we move forward. Fantastic. Yeah. Don't foam win. You'll get an invite. Amazing. Well, last question uh, actually comes uh, from me. What are you most excited about today, moving forward, and why? On dev kids or <laughs> anything? Anything that you're working on. I'm mean, talking about, of okay. course, clearly yeah, you're living, yeah, yeah, breathing, yeah. And, 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 you know, fuming really... dev kids. But yeah. Uh, so, yeah. what are you most excited about? Uh, and keeping polishing the alpha footage that we're going to have next week. So we are finishing some screens. I'm l really looking forward to uh, to record the gameplay and explain. I'm, I'm not just going to show the gameplay. We're going to have like a voiceover explaining, okay, that's your main screen, that's your roster, that's your uh, nursery where is the, we played the Tamagotchi gameplay, and that's your item, that that uh, bar uh, means that thing. I'm really looking forward to get that polished to start to record that and release the, the, the alpha gameplay footage. Fantastic. Well, Sergio... Thank you so much for taking uh, time to talk to, to the Clever community and to DevKins community and, and to people all around the world who listened in and who will be listening in over the coming days. Um, really, really pleasure and honor. Thank you so much uh, for coming in. Thank you, Misha, and all people um, on Clever. I'm really glad to have this partnership. And I'm learning a lot. And you guys are good instructors. <laughs> a lot of experience. We we are happy to to share and we're happy to learn as well and I think that's the that's the most beautiful thing about any partnership that we do and especially the one that we have with Devikins that it's it's a give and take and it's a win win right like you come from the gaming uh, industry and you, you give a lot of insights to our team and anything that we can do from the blockchain side from the crypto side from the encryption side from the security architecture side we are there to help you assist you uh, and I think that is the magic that happens when uh, to great projects meet. Uh, yeah. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been a, a very, very uh, eye-opening uh, session. And until next time, don't forget that your only limit is you. All right.